Hi, my name's Andy McCulloch. I'm one of the solutions architects in Ultima's Modern Workspace team. And today we're going to be taking a look at a demo of deploying Windows Virtual Desktop with Infrastructure as Code tools. What we're going to show today is deploying a new WVD deployment into an existing Azure environment in less than 15 minutes. We're going to create the WVD environment, including all the required components, including host pools and application groups. We're going to deploy two Windows 10 multi-session session hosts into a host pool ready to use. And we're going to configure supporting requirements, for example, log analytics for diagnostics in, and log ingestion for operational support and monitoring. What we're using to do this, we're using primarily HashCorp Terraform. Now, this is being implemented with a, a wrapper um, function using PowerShell um, to help us drive the configuration of Terraform. Now, this allows us to use this toolset rather flexibly across different deployment types. Um, however, the heavy lifting is all being done by the Terraform providers. So if you're not familiar with Terraform, then Terraform is an open source tool. Uh, so free of charge, uh, you can go to HashCorp and download it for, uh, for use in enterprises or for personal investigation. Um, it's a very popular tool for infrastructure as code, so it's quite widely adopted for cloud infrastructure management. One of the great things about Terraform is that it's the declarative uh, tool set. Now, Declarative is fantastic for infrastructure as code because it's basically creating a definition of what your infrastructure should look like. Um, so rather than traditional automation where you may have a automated process which handles a certain set of steps, um, declarative uh, infrastructure as code is very much about ensuring that your infrastructure complies with a certain specification. So Terraform is about creating that specification, feeding it into the Terraform mechanism, and then Terraform will make sure that your infrastructure looks like what you think it should look like. So making sure that your actual infrastructure complies with the code definition of what your infrastructure should look like. So Terraform has support for many different infrastructure providers, both on-prem and cloud, uh, including in this case, Microsoft Azure. So it's a really useful tool set for managing multi-cloud or hybrid cloud management uh, environments. So one of the particularly tricky bits that we're handling is the WVD host deployment. So in our demo, we're using marketplace images for Windows 10 multi-session. Now these could equally be custom images or SIG hosted images if you're creating your own. Um, we're deploying the log analytics agent, so the Microsoft management agent into our WVD session hosts, um, and they're going to be registered with our log analytics workspace so we can get metrics out of those to understand performance or if there's any issues. All of our hosts are going to be domain joined, so uh, they will be domain joined and computer accounts created into our WVD session host OU. And then we're using desired state configuration for deploying our WVD agents and actually registering those with our WVD infrastructure using the registration tokens that are created when we provision our host pool environment. So that just gives you a bit of an overview of what we're going to have a look at. So over to the demo. Okay, so we're going to have a look at an example WVD deployment for a customer called Contoso. Now, Contoso already have an existing Azure environment, including networking, uh, HubSpoke topology. So we're going to look at the deployment of WVD specific resources, which currently they don't have any of. So there are no host pools, no application groups in the environment. And what we're going to do is have a look from a user perspective just to show that currently there are no WVD resources available for a test user. Now, what we're going to do is run our PowerShell wrapper script. Now, this PowerShell wrapper script is primarily used for two things. Firstly, it's used to link together a couple of different Terraform deployments, which are deploying different parts of the environment. So we have one Terraform deployment, which is used for deploying the WVD uh, resources. So the application groups, the host pools, 
um, and the supporting configuration for those. And we have a separate deployment which is used for deploying hosts into that WVD environment. So we can see here that we've started provisioning infrastructure. So we have our host pool created and we have our application group created and it's just going through and configuring some diagnostic settings to enable us to get telemetry out of the different components that are being deployed. We're also managing our assignments for the application group. So part of WVD is the brokering and entitlement uh, processes, which means that we're making the WVD resources that we're providing available to uh, one of our Active Directory groups. Now, you might notice we've started the timer running in the top right, just so we can track how long the overall duration of the deployment is. Now, the actual deployment of the WVD infrastructure is now complete. So when we look at our host pools, we can see that we now have an entry in our list of host pools. And if we uh, see that we have a pooled host pool and we are load balancing for breadth first, we can see that we've not got any host pool uh, resources available because we're still deploying those. But if we go into our application groups, then we can see that we have a link between our application group, which is the publishing layer of WVD, and the host pool, which is uh, currently having resources added to it. We can see that we've got a desktop application group type, so there is a difference between desktop and application application groups. So one obviously is responsible for providing users with desktop access, and the other would be for making remote apps or published applications available. Uh, to users. So if we have a look at our diagnostic settings, we can see that on our uh, on our application group that we do have uh, some diagnostic settings configured. So diagnostic settings gives the ability to pull telemetry out of the different components of the WVD environment. So they're available for monitoring purposes and also troubleshooting. So uh, from a couple of different layers we can take feeds and we can use that for uh, troubleshooting any connection issues or any host registration issues that might occur in the environment now switching back to our deployment scripts we can see that we have a couple of virtual machines deploying so you may notice that we've got virtual machine zero and virtual machine one um, currently being deployed now this is because in our configuration we have it specified that we're going to deploy two session hosts into our host pool so typically this takes around about five minutes to deploy so we're just going to fast forward some of this progress and we'll come back once those virtual machines have finished deploying So we now have our virtual machines deployed. So the next step we're moving on to is that we're deploying the uh, VM extensions for log analytics. So this involves the installation of the Microsoft management agent into the virtual machines. So this is being applied using a virtual machine extensions. So we're able to actually trigger the software installation inside of the virtual machines post deployment. So now the log analytics extension has finished installing, we're moving on to our domain join extension. Now this typically takes around a minute or so per virtual machine. 
Uh, and all this is doing is it's going to join them to our Active Directory domain uh, with a domain controller already existing in the environment. And it's going to place the computer accounts for those in the specified OU to make sure that we have some organization for the computer accounts. So now the domain joins are complete, we're performing a host pool join for the deployed virtual machines. So this is going to do a couple of things. Firstly, it's going to retrieve the content that it needs from a Microsoft storage account. Now, this is from a public URL that's accessible to everyone, um, and it just pulls down the components that it needs to be able to install the WVD agents into the virtual machine. And it downloads as part of that a set of scripts which can be used by the des desired state configuration extension. This enables us to push some parameters into the install, which gives it the information it needs to register to our environment. For example, the host pool name, the uh, host pool registration token to make sure that we're linking it to our WVD deployment. So this typically takes a couple of minutes to complete. And hopefully once that's completed successfully, we'll be able to see some resources that are then available to us. Okay, so 13 minutes, 30 seconds in, our deployment's completed. So we're going to go back as our test user and just refresh our WVD page. And we can see that we've now got desktop available to us for Contoso Corp desktop. So we'll click through the connection and it's established a connection. We just need to provide it with some Windows credentials so it can authenticate using our Active Directory account. have an established connection to our WVD session host. And there we have it, 14 minutes and 31 seconds. And we're now connected to our first WVD resource hosted for Contoso Corp. Going back to our automation, we can see from the output that Terraform's created as part of our uh, addition of hosts to our host pool. We've created 13 resources to support the two additional hosts that we've deployed. Now, this is where some of the value of infrastructure as code comes in, and specifically with regards to Terraform in being a declarative language with some other tools where they're not declarative. If we were to repeat the running of the automation for deployment of those two hosts, what would happen is that uh, where we've defined that there should be two hosts to be provisioned, then if we rerun it, then we're saying add another two hosts, giving us a total of four. Whereas with Terraform, because our configuration says that there should be two hosts that are configured in our host pool, the expected result is that we should be able to run that automation as many times as we want. And the net result will be that the infrastructure will comply with our definition and there will be two hosts in that host pool. So what we're just doing now is we're just rerunning that automation. And what we should see is that once Terraform has gone through, it'll validate the infrastructure that's deployed against what it has in its definitions. And when completed, we should see that there are 
no additions, no changes, and no resources destroyed, making sure that our infrastructure complies with the state that we've specified. So this shows some of the value of infrastructure as code in that we're ensuring that our infrastructure is always going to comply with our definition of what that infrastructure should look like. And going back to the Azure portal, we can now see if we have a look at our host pool that we are now showing that there are two session hosts available in our host pool. And if we have a look at those, then we should be able to see that they are both showing as available for connections. So 14 minutes to deploy a new WVD environment using infrastructure as code tooling.